Devontae Adams has now been traded to the New York Jets, who just lost on Monday Night Football to the Buffalo Bills. What it means for the Jets, the Raiders, Devontae Adams, trade compensation. We're hearing from the ownership now of the New York Jets, AFC playoff picture, and much more news on today's Chock Full Edition of Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look at the NFL on the field and in the front office with elite breakdowns to next level analysis and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks to everybody for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We love all our everydayers out there and welcome to all the new listeners. Make sure you are subscribed. Please hit that subscribe button. Helps us out tremendously on YouTube or wherever you are listening to this podcast. In today's episode of Peacock and Williamson brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL to get twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase. Well, the timing is strange, Matt. With the Devonte Adams trade being announced here Tuesday morning, just hours after the New York Jets lost to the Buffalo Bills on Monday Night Football to fall to two and four, Devonte Adams now headed to New York to be a Jet along with his former quarterback and his former teammate wide receiver as well, right? Uh, with the New York Jets. So we've got the Packers East going on with the New York Jets now. Is that what they need? And my first immediate initial thought when I saw this happen was the Raiders and the Jets have the same record, Matt. Right. (laughs) Not that. So it just so happens that the Jets are coming to Pittsburgh next week for Sunday Night Football. And Tuesday is my deep dive on the opponent, Matt Stats crazy worksheet I do for Steeler, every Steeler game that ends up on Steelers.com. Not all of the stats end up on Steelers.com, by the way. Some of the things get neutered a little, you know, such is life. But Tuesday is my deep dive on the opponent. So I am about halfway through digging in heavy to the Jets. And after watching last night and all that, this is somewhat of a desperate franchise. I mean, they're now on a three-game losing streak. We know that, I, I often said, this is the most fragile team in the league going into the year because of the age and Tyron Smith and Rodgers and just the way they're built. But I didn't realize to this degree, too, they're on a 13-year playoff drought. Like, that. not only is that the longest currently in the league, But Denver's next at eight years. Atlanta and Carolina are at six. And then no other franchise in the league is more than three. And they're at 13. I mean, like a real standout for not going to the playoffs. It is desperate times. And they just keep losing. (laughs) You know, so I don't know if this is enough to pull you out of that rut and get you to the postseason. But it better be. I mean, you talk about pushing all your chips in, and I don't disapprove of the move, but it's another old guy to win now. Uh, Clearly, it's somewhat desperation. It's owner Woody Johnson sending the message that uh, we better go win this now because this is all about to get blown up. We're going for it. And Mm -hmm. uh, whether or not they are good enough to be going for it, should be going for it at two and four now after six weeks of the season, I guess that remains to be seen. Um, but heads are going to roll if it doesn't work out. And obviously Aaron Rodgers isn't going to be a long-term quarterback for the New York Jets anyway. Right. Now his uh, old buddy, Devontae Adams, is going to join him to try to help make that happen, just to sort of um, close the book here on the actual trade. It is a conditional third-round pick that is going from the New York Jets to the Las Vegas Raiders for Devontae Adams. And that condition on the third-round pick – could become a second-round pick from the Jets to the Raiders if any of the following happens per a source that told Adam Schefter that Devontae Adams must be a first- or second-team AP All-Pro, or so any of this has to happen, not all of it. Just single of one, one, any of them. Okay. What was the first one again? All-Pro, first- or second-team, 
or he has okay. to be on the active roster for the Jets when they make an appearance in either the AFC Championship game or the Super Bowl. And obviously, you have to go to the championship game before you go to the Super Bowl. So the Super Bowl part doesn't matter at all. So <laughs> yeah, they'll just let you sneak in there, right? Yeah. How would you put that on there? So AFC Championship <laughs> right. game for the Jets or All Pro first or second team for Devontae Adams that becomes a second round pick instead of a third round pick. What do you think about the compensation there? So I assume that's only for this year because they're going to get compensated after. I mean, like if the Jets go to the AFC Championship game two years from now with Adams on the roster, they don't know anything. I mean, I would imagine because they've already, already gave him the three. Yeah, they have the picks already gone. So it's a three that can turn into a two, right? Yes. It seems likely, I would say it's a 25% chance, less than, that it turns into a two. I mean, I think there's only, even if there's three, it'd be pretty tough to be in the top six Pro Bowl votes. You know, I think there's only four. No, uh, all pro, which is even more difficult than Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl. Yeah. So that's a better chance to me than getting to the AFC Championship game. So let's say it's a third, you know. Uh, it's a, I, I would say it's a, Three percent chance that yeah, it becomes yeah. a second round pick because the more uh, I think about it, yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's just not super likely that they're going to go to the AFC Championship game. And Devontae Adams is already behind the eight ball a little bit as far as voting, and you know he he could go crazy and go become an All Pro there. Um, but you know this is AFC and NFC when it comes to the All Pro, so uh, he's missed two games already. You know? And there's <laughs> a lot of targets to go around. Uh, he's the his what the other best receiver on the Jets in Garrett Wilson has been the most targeted player in the entire NFL over the course of the last three weeks. So, yeah. Um, so he's competing. I love targets. Adams. I don't know if he's the best player on his team at his position. Yeah. You know? Right. And so, you know, that might flip and then maybe Garrett Wilson is the guy who doesn't get a lot of targets anymore. And, uh, you know, obviously there's a good rapport with Lazard there for, for Aaron Rodgers as well. So does he kind of go by the wayside in, in, Adams jumps in there, so we'll see. But I don't know if the target share is going to be there. So pretty unlikely it becomes a second-round pick, possible, but most likely a third-round pick. And so I think that's about right. Conditional third seems like the right mm -hmm. uh, compensation. As far as compensation goes, like, first of all, so Devontae Adams went to the wrong team, in my opinion. He, he should have gone to the other yeah. team on Monday Night Football. Bears, who need the receiver more. It could have helped Devontae Adams more to be – at, to be a, a true number one there and really own the target share for a better team that's much more likely to, say, be in the AFC Championship game or um, help Adams become an all-pro because of that target share. But maybe that's why the Buffalo Bills said, no, we're not going to do conditional. It's only going to be a third. W was that part of it? Did Devontae Adams say, I only want to go to the Jets? The Pittsburgh Steelers would have seemingly bid as good or a better spot. And now there's some Steelers news as well that just came out before we started recording that Russell Wilson is going to be the starter now for the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Jets on Sunday night. So I just found that news out. We'll get to that in a minute. But um, how about my prediction, though? Now I think about it. I predicted Adams would play in that game last night, and I missed it by one day. Yeah, it, so, uh, yeah. some, some people, I mean, obviously, if it happened first thing Tuesday morning, this was probably nearing or completely done at some point last night. So yeah. you were kind of right on that. He wasn't playing in the game, but he ended up – in one of these cities on Tuesday morning. So, so pretty darn close there. And, and um, I still think he ended up with the wrong team and, and I would really love to see him with the Buffalo bills. And so who knows if there was, um, you know, supposedly there was a few teams, bills, jets being among those that were involved in these talks for Devonte Adams. Was it the bills not ponying up the conditional potential second? Was it the uh, Devonte Adams deciding factor where he just really decided where he was going to go? And, and they were, they had the same comp compensation from the Steelers and the bills and whatever other teams might've been in the mix. I'm not sure, but compensation makes sense. I think it's the wrong team. I agree. And actually watching that game last night, I was thinking, boy, it'd be nice to have Diggs back or Adams or somebody like that for the Bills. And I think that had been the best fit for player and team. You, I, I think you tend to agree, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Can, uh, can Devontae Adams play left tackle? That might help. <laughs> yeah, that would be good too. And just wide receiver is uh, not what's ailing the Jets right now. All right, back to the compensation. First off, I think Mike Williams goes by the wayside too. And well, yeah, his target is completely yeah. gone. I would think if you're the Steelers or Ravens or Chiefs and want a receiver on the cheap, I bet you can get him for nothing. But I don't know what kind of value he has. He seems like he's always hurt and disappointing. Um, so we talk as you can imagine on our 
the drive for Steelers.com. We've talked about Adams and compensation quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. And, you know, the original reports were the Raiders want a two and something. And that always is higher than, you know, it, just like the Niners wanted IU a one and a player. You know, like, yeah. of course, they're going to say things like that, but you're not going to get, get the, the asking price. And we thought at the time, would you do the Steelers second straight up for Adams? And I leaned towards no when it was all said and done. Because what we don't know, and this goes back to Reddick, is you might be renting him for the year because Adam's contract is a little bizarre. Like, it goes up to like a $35 million cap hit next year. So to make this deal make any sense, you really have to tack on extra years and renegotiate with them. To just rent him from now until week 17, to me, for a second round pick or even a third is awful steep and sort of desperate. But if you can rework the deal and I'm not exactly sure how the money works out, I think a third is more than fair, you know, especially, well, I guess we don't know that yet, but I, I was just thinking of it from a Raiders perspective. If the bills and jets both offered you a third, I would take the jets third. I'd probably still take it over the Steelers too. They have two two more wins than the Jets too. You know, I mean, I, the Steelers are probably going to end up in playoffs. I don't know if the Jets will. So I think that's fine. But now what happens? I mean, you better renegotiate with them. Okay, I've got or some more information them. on the contract. Okay, uh, we got some words from Woody Johnson, the owner of the New York Jets, on this. Uh, we got to talk about the Monday Night Football game, Buffalo Bills, and the AFC playoff picture. A little more about Russell Wilson as well being named the Steelers. Starter in week seven, all that and more coming on today. Reddick news, too, right? They're all kind of stuff going on, right? on the move. Oh, next, right. next domino, we'll get to all of it next. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Uh, you're getting a little excited about the New York Jets, you want to bet on them to win the Super Bowl or get to that AFC championship game. Guess what? You can find that action on FanDuel and you can also get a big return, NFL fans, right now on FanDuel because you can get started with $200 in bonus bets when you sign up at FanDuel right now and place your first $5 bet. And that $200 in bonus bets is guarantees when you play that first $5 bet at FanDuel.com. So download the app or go to FanDuel.com and get America's number one sports book. And while you're watching football in week seven and you're in the middle of a game, you want to check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more. Well, you can find all that on the same page where you're placing your bets and maybe get a little information to inform those bets at FanDuel.com. And again, get started with $200 in bonus bets. That's $200 extra free to play with, guaranteed, when you place your first $5 bet for new customers at FanDuel. Just go to FanDuel.com or download the app to get America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com. If you want to play DFS, Prize Picks is the place to do it. The easiest and most fun way to play DFS. And how about winning up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks? But not just that, Prize Picks also has flex play. In fact, Prize Picks invented flex play, which means you can still cash out even if your lineup isn't perfect. You can double your money even if one of your picks doesn't hit on price picks and price picks couldn't be easier. All you do is you pick two, uh, two or more player stat projections. You go more than or less than on those stat projections at price picks and watch the winnings roll in. For example, Justin Jefferson for more than 83 and a half receiving yards or Patrick Mahomes less than 267 and a half passing yards. You go more than or less than on those picks uh, versus those stat projections every week at price picks. And there's tons of projections in any sport, not just football as well. And download the app today and then use promo code locked on NFL and get $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. Again, that is promo code locked on NFL at Price Picks to get $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup at Price Picks. Run your game. All right, Matt, we've got some words. From ownership here. Actually, you know, okay. let me go to the, the uh, I tease the contract here. So, a uh, contract information. So, the Jets, when they get Devontae Adams, it's going to cost about $11 million for his guaranteed contract the rest of 2024. 
Uh, future years, though, not guaranteed on Devontae Adams' deal. So there's almost right. certainly going to be some sort of extension, restructure if he stays with the Jets. If there's future trades, he goes to another team. Potentially, if this all becomes a disaster and Aaron Rodgers retires or whatever, he could end up somewhere else too. Uh, the money's not guaranteed for 24 or for 2025 and 2026, but the cap hits are 36.25 million dollars. So there you can't pay him that. Yeah, right. So they're either going to restructure or, you know, Devontae Adams might say, I want a new deal anyway. And, you know, because once a player doesn't have guaranteed money anymore, they want more guaranteed money. So something's going to happen next year with Devontae Adams contract, no matter what. Uh, but he does but have isn't that what we thought about when they traded for Reddick. <laughs> oh, yeah, this, yeah, that's, right. that's true. So we'll find right. out. Um, and then the Raiders do take a, a pretty sizable dead cap hit of the rest of that. They do. Um, of about 13 or 14 million dollars this year uh and then i think they have future dead cap as well next year yeah so another 15 million next year dead cap for the raiders uh woody johnson so more needs to be done is the bottom line or right. otherwise you're renting them for 11 weeks it, it's it's it, it probably won't be a rental because he is under contract so at that point you know do the jets trade him again and it, it was a rental but then they get another pick back or um do they end up you know, restructuring, doing a new deal with him. And and so, yeah, something, something is to be done with that contract most likely in 2025. Yeah. Um, Jets owner, Woody Johnson said, quote, status quo is a killer, which is interesting. Uh, he also went on to say, you have to go with your instinct and build a culture. And he was encouraged by last night's game, even though they lost excited about Devonte Adams saying he'll open everything up. Uh, he also said that um, they're doing everything they can to win now. Woody Johnson said, I'm doing everything I can to win now. I'm doing absolutely everything, everything. So that's where Woody Johnson is right now with this um, st status quo. Yeah. Um, doing everything to win now. Yeah. The but trying to build a culture. This doesn't feel like a culture build. This feels like a let's throw everything together, fire a coach, add some pieces, and hope. Uh, th so th that yeah. kind of doesn't jive for me. Aaron, take us to the promised land kind of feel to it. I mean, it, it feels more desperate than we're building a culture from the ground right. up feel to me. Like Washington commanders are building a culture. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, I do think, you know, as you were saying that, I was thinking about it. I, I think they now have the best skill position players in the league, you know, especially if you consider – Allen and Conklin and Williams and Corley and Lazard, you know, I mean, those guys are all dropped down a peg, you know, and, and you got Hall who went for over a hundred and you have obviously Wilson and Adams who are stars. It's probably the best set of receivers in the league. That's great. You know, it's a good start. Um, they have a big hole to dig out of. I don't think the rest of their schedule is super hard, but it's not easy. I don't even know if they're favored or, or uh, a dog in Pittsburgh, but that's not an easy game. It's probably about a coin flip. Multiple and how games much will we head to head now behind the Bills in the East? Right. Uh, right. And then you look at a pretty difficult task to go get a wild card spot, and I think they're two and two right now in the conference. The Jets are so yeah. you know they're you know kind of middle of the road as far as trying to win that tiebreaker, which conference record is the first tiebreaker for the wild card spots. So it's not as an easy path. And by the way, uh, the the Miami Dolphins uh, are, are still ahead of them in the East as well at two and three, and they had a bye week in week six. And they might get Tua back in a week or two, or you know, sooner than later. I mean, at least they're. they're I, I haven't dug a grave for them yet, you know. So they could end up ahead of the Jets when it's all said and done. They do have a good defense. Um, do we dig into last night's game just a little? I, I don't have a ton of takeaways about it, but boy, yeah, it'd be nice to, if they would end up winning it. Uh, just real quick to to wrap up the Jets trade portion of this podcast because. Uh, Hassan Reddick is still out there and uh, yeah. you just mentioned the Hassan Reddick thing and how weird that was and ended up not doing a new deal with him. Uh, the CAA Hassan Reddick's agency dropped him this week. Drew Rosenhaus has now picked up Reddick as a client or Reddick has hired Drew Rosenhaus as his agent. And now uh, after the original report of Rosenhaus saying that the, the idea is to get a deal done with the Jets, and who knows, maybe this helps us on Reddick say, okay, I want to, uh, I, I want to be a Reddick. Jet now. This is exciting, and you know, we got, we're, we're trying to go win this thing. But then you hear Woody Johnson talk about culture, so maybe he's saying, no, the guy who holds out and doesn't want to sign, okay, he's going to get traded away now, and that's going to help us gain a pick that we're going to trade for Devonte Adams. Um, but apparently, over the last you know day. Drew Rosenhaus has been trying to potentially trade, and Hassan Reddick has been given permission to seek that trade 
according to Diana Rossini. So we might have another trade in New York, but with Hassan Reddick leaving town. And I, you got to draw that parallel, that, that line to Detroit potentially as a really nice fit after Aiden Hudson had that season ending injury. Absolutely. I, I maybe throw the Bears in there. I probably could throw them up with another name or two, but uh, Detroit absolutely should pony up maybe even more than he's worth. Maybe the Jets and him can get a deal done. Who knows? I mean, they do want hockey lines of defensive linemen in a Niners-like fashion. That's why he's there in the first place. But odd. I, I would think that happens soon. I don't know what their cap situation is, but Adams doesn't help it. Um, I don't know. I, I don't got a whole lot else on the deal. In the end, I bet it doesn't pay off for the Jets, but I see what they're doing. And again, I think it's a desperate or somewhere between desperate and aggressive, you know, <laughs> depending if you're for it or against it, you know? If you were Devontae Adams and the trade was not done yet, but you knew compensation and the Raiders came to you and said, okay, Devontae, we've got three deals that are all the same that we're okay with. Do you want to go to the Jets, the Bills, or the Steelers? And uh, and it was midnight, midnight Monday or it was Tuesday. I would think you would say, yeah, I want to go to Buffalo. Buffalo, for yeah. sure. I understand you love Rodgers and your buddies, and that seems to matter more to him. I mean, he went with Carr than most receivers, and I'm not even giving him a hard time, but personal mm -hmm. relationships in the world matter. Steelers versus Jets, I don't know which one I'd prefer. I mean, probably the Steelers don't throw the ball very much, and we'll talk about their quarterback in a second, you know? Yeah, we, we'll talk about how that looks with uh, with Russell Wilson now being the starter next, and uh, let's let's – finish up this conversation about the bills and which is usually how we start our Tuesday podcast about the bills and the jets on Monday night football. Give it that game. Talk Steelers AFC next. This episode of Peacock and Williamson brought to you by game time and game time picks is a new feature at game time. When you download the game time app to get not only NFL tickets, not only football tickets, not, not only any sporting event tickets, but you can find concert and comedy show tickets, theater event tickets, as well at Game Time. And Game Time Picks filters out all the fluff. Game Time Picks makes, makes getting tickets even easier for all of your favorite events because they only show you incredible deals on great seats, so you don't have to waste your time searching through potentially thousands of tickets that you might see if you're trying to go, say, to an NFL football game. And not only can you get those Game Time Picks and phenomenal deals and up to 60% off tickets for last-minute seats for any sporting events or concert uh, concert shows or uh, comedy shows near you. You also get a panoramic view from your seat on the Game Time app, uh, which is phenomenal. Uh, you have the lowest price guarantee. Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. And Game Time ticket coverage. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time Picks. Download the Game Time app and create an account and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. Monday Night Football. So there was a game last night, uh, which is taking yeah. a backseat to all the trade conversations here on today's show and uh some missed field goals some uh some weird stuff some some great plays we had a hail mary a vintage aaron Rodgers hail mary which still was not How about that as the buffalo bills defeated the jets 23 20 because that's the thing's like you hit a hail mary and you still lost the game you take that away and this all of a sudden becomes not that close of a game this Devonte adams trade might be a hail mary <laughs> <laughs> but if anybody can hit it it's rogers i mean he's the best ever at it i mean that was pretty awesome i, I have to admit that was a, a highlight of the season so far one of them i mean it, it's a miraculous that he can do that at a regular rate or more so than anyone i've ever seen well i mean what is is it he just puts the right amount of air under it uh, is there something else I technique wise that he and his receivers know that the rest of the league doesn't know with the way he throws hail marys there i bet the answer is yes i bet he has some wacko theory that if I put it super high and I get it to come down directly or maybe the opposite, or it's not like you're looking off a of safety or, you know, like there's like a six, five receiver. Right. So like he's got yeah. size. So that's the type of player you want to target in that situation. Is there a certain way they box it out or the certain way it's like, okay, you're going to go here, but then you're going to move this way. When I throw it, it's going to give you a better chance to go up and get the ball. I, I bet there's more like that. Like what to do when you're in the end zone, as opposed to him throwing the football. Mm -hmm. One thing I've always found interesting, just a side note, is 
you can get away with a lot of pushing and shoving and D or O P I S in this situation. They never throw that flag. So I bet he's saying there's got to be aggressive some, as you can. some space creation for yourself. So you can actually jump. Cause a lot of times you yeah. can't jump because you end up jumping into somebody else. Right. And, right. And you can't really fully just go up and pull down the rebound. Um, as for the game. That's sort of a fluky play. I thought the Bills were the better team, but it was a pretty evenly matched game all in all. Rodgers took some hits. That would concern me. I, you know, you mentioned, can he play left tackle? I mean, the, the, the old, old, guy, old timer didn't look real happy about getting blasted a few times. Yeah. The most penalized game of the year, 11 for each team, and the yardage was, I, mean, I just want to look at it real quick, 94 and 110 for the two teams. So, so I that's was, not great. I was at a sports bar for, for part of the game with some friends. And every time I looked at the screen, they were just having a conversation. It was like, is there a yeah, game? Yeah, yeah. We're just going to talk about <laughs> what penalties are all day long. You know, and when you're, when you don't have audio, you're not watching the, the game like that. You're like, what are they talking about for so long? Can we get to the football? So there was like a lot of stoppages, a lot of breaks. And, and I think the big key was, you know, Hail Mary aside, Jets threw one interception. Bills didn't turn the ball over at all. Jets hit two uprights, and you know, in that swirling wind. I think people know that I look at missed field goals as the same as a turnover in a tight game. That was the difference, you know. It was just we're able to get a little going on the ground too with Brees Hall. Yes, 113 yes. yards, which he's kind of you know that that ground game hasn't really been doing much, and Braylon Allen had kind of eaten into that Brees Hall usage the last few weeks, so they got that going at least for him. Uh, the Jets did. And on the other side, with no cook, uh, you had Ray Davis, who looked pretty good as a rookie, catching the For ball sure. out of the backfield, had that 42-yard reception, and then 20 carries for 97 yards on the ground as well. I assume new offensive coordinator, new coach, job number one was, let's feed Brees Hall. I mean, with all respect to Allen, who's an impressive player, Hall had 113s on the ground and 56 in the air and was getting the ball a lot in all shape and form. So I think that was definitely a priority. I really like Ray Davis. I mean, Cook was a late scratch. I'm sure a lot of people had him in their fantasy lineup, but he's one of those tough to tackle, bowling ball, low to the ground, runs like his life depends on it type of guy, and easy to root for with his backstory, too. He had a long catch, too. Steelers trade for Mike Williams? I'd give you a seventh or, I mean, <laughs> I know you talked about every possible receiver on your Steelers shows that could be available for Pittsburgh, and they still haven't added any of them. Well, I know this for a fact. It was never reported, but I know this for a fact that the day he signed with the Jets, he was set to get on a plane to come to Pittsburgh. So he was, he just never got on the plane. Not to necessarily sign, but just to go meet with the Steelers. He was, that was the next stop. Yeah. yeah. One of those. Yeah. Like, okay, we're not going to let you get on the plane. We're not going to let you. Yeah, leave. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. All right. So Bill's in a good spot now. Four and two. 23 20 and apparently they were in on the the Devontae adams trade so i wonder if there might be a receiver you know i don't know if the uh, amari cooper or, you know uh, yeah, the jets probably won't be helping out the bills uh with with trading them uh, mike williams if that was an option but uh, i wonder if the buffalo bills might still be shopping for a wide receiver potentially and there could be some other guys available around the nfl so uh, we'll put a pin in that one uh, trade season has i think begun now with the adams trade and it's not going to be over until uh, after after Halloween, I guess, yeah, early yeah. Uh, early November is uh, is the trade deadline this year. So, I mean, I think you get Amari Cooper. I've talked about Christian Kirk a lot to the Steelers. To Andre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley seems unhappy, although he just signed. What if the Bengals lose a game or two? Can you get T. Higgins? You know, so I think there's receivers to be had. All right, so the Pittsburgh Steelers have made a move at quarterback. It's not going to be Justin Fields starting. This week, week seven, it's going to be Russell Wilson. Is this because of the offense? Is this because of health for Russell Wilson? Like, oh, yeah, we, he was always the starter. Now he's healthy. Or is this, uh, ah, we don't like kind of he looks right now? Uh, all the above. Like, I do think if it was a playoff game, probably at any point in the season, Wilson could have played, you know, but they wanted to see fields. I mean, but his injury was real. I mean, he was, he, I'd go to practice and he wasn't practicing or he was just on the sidelines. I mean, it mm -hmm. wasn't like it was that situation, but they did not rush him back for sure. Um, but he's now finally fully healthy. I mean, late last week was the first time he was truly doing team drills and everything 100% since training camp. So that's all real, but not tragic. You know, um, he wasn't promised anything, but he was brought in to be the starter. 
You know, I mean, that when, when all those things were happening, he had several options. He had, you know, as, as Tomlin said, he had pole position for the starting job. And I think Fields did better than I expected and improved in several areas from his Bears days. But there's also some things that he still doesn't do well. He leads the league in fumbles. He's getting sacked a lot again. He is missing too many open throws, particularly deep and layup type throws. And every offense in the league is stacking the box like crazy. The Steelers run the ball like madmen with big personnel. And you got to hit the shots. And Fields hasn't. And that's been one of Wilson's best things in his career is deep ball thrower. And the Steelers also, this is a crazy th number. The last two years, 2022 and 2023, as a team, they threw 12 and 13 touchdown passes for the whole seasons. I mean, that is incredibly low. 25 touchdowns in two whole years. Wilson threw 26 last year and sat out the two last games. You know, yeah, like in a down year. In a down year, right. And everyone thought he was terrible. Like he throws touchdowns. I mean, that sounds so remedial, but I've been joking all offseason and be like, what if this team throws touchdowns this year? You know, like that's kind of a nice thing to have. Does. A fantasy owner right now dangle Garrett Wilson in trade to get George Pickens and maybe more back? It's not bad. I mean, Pickens has been really close to blowing up a lot. You know, he's drawn a lot of defensive pass interferences, getting a heavy target share, a little bit of a squeaky wheel right now, being a, a little bit of a pain in the butt, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think Wilson helps him. I think it makes the offense better. And I know most people around here, and I understand it, really want Fields. They're going to be unhappy about this move because they think Fields is going to be the next, you know, great one and they're grooming them. But I'll tell you what, this organization, for right or wrong, they really only care first and foremost about winning this game. You know, I mean, like, that's just how the organization has been forever. They're not like, well, we'll just take our lumps and groom this guy. If the better guy is at the number two, they're going to play him. And I think he's the better guy right now. And I think you have to see it at least. Bills. And, and there could be a fields package. I mean, he could come in and run the ball and do some, you know, he might still see the field. Real quick question here in the yeah. AFC. So we got the Bills, Ravens, Texans, Chiefs. Uh, and those feel like very strong division winners potentially right now, even though you know yeah. the Ravens and Steelers are actually tied with a four and two record in the north. Uh, feel strong about the Bills in the East, especially after that win against the Jets. And, and really, it's, you can lock up the the South and the West with the Texans and the Chiefs. Who are your three AFC wildcard teams? Oh, I think the Steelers are the easy answer. I mean, they're in pretty good spot right now. Their schedule doesn't look too crazy. I think the Bengals were the next best team, but that is a climb. I mean, to, to get there, I kind of lean towards the Chargers, who I don't think are quite as good, but have a very easy schedule. And as you said yesterday, they beat bad teams. And, you know, I mean, that, that might be enough to get you to nine or ten wins. I'm going to go Steelers, Jets, Chargers. It would be Steelers, I think... Chargers, and then between the Colts and the Broncos with three win teams, if the season right, ended right. today for those, for those, I think three. they're going to Richardson, and uh, you know, I don't think yeah. Nick's is good. Steelers are in a pretty good spot right now. Yeah, they are. I mean, they're going to be one of the seven probably. The Jets, uh, if the Jets lose to the Steelers this week, I know that's a four game losing streak, and like Just all this is for nothing. Yeah, I'm like, whoop, that lasted a week. <laughs> Right. I mean, they better win this game. And they might. All right. Uh, more on those games. We're going to be making picks for week seven. We've got our weekly mailbag as well. So get those questions into us at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Drop a question on YouTube comments and subscribe while you're there. Matt and I back tomorrow. Peacock and Williamson.